suffering out here. Okay, these leaders, including Nas Mandela, they took the disadvantage while doing hard labor and they made it now into their own advantage. Because, because Nas Mandela said when he came here as a person, he said, let us turn this whole island into our place of learning. Okay, he said, let us prepare ourselves for freedom by educating ourselves. But also remember, Nas Mandela, when he came to this island, what did he come here as? He came already as a lawyer. He was a lawyer. He was a literate man. So he was also amongst them. He was also lawyers. He was doctors here. He was professors amongst them. He was teachers here. Literate people, educated people, doing hard labor here. But also remember that also 60% of them was already elderly people from the age of 60 years old also. Elderly people. Okay? Literate people and elderly people. So now also, but also remember, after 1976, the uprising of the students. Now, um, a lot of youth, when they came to the island as prisoners, as political prisoners, they came here at the age of 14 years old, 16, 17, 15. Young boys came here as, as political prisoners at the young age. So when these young youth came to Robin Island, many of them didn't even have, have any form of education because they were young in the struggle. When they came to Robin Island, many of them couldn't even write their names. They were illiterate, many of them. Because like I said, they were young in the struggle. They didn't, it will be the first time ever they will be taught how to read and write. It all started out of that table with them. Each one teach one. Because these leaders, those it was literate, they came up with, with this name. Each one shall teach one. Okay? It was brought up by Niels Mandela. Because he said, okay, we, you must also remember these leaders, these persons on the island, these leaders actually, many of them was life sentence, life sentence. If you're sentenced life sentence, it means you're going to die on this island, those years, okay? So they didn't know if ever they could, they could live a life from here. But still, they encouraged one another to educate themselves even further under such conditions, okay? Because, in, because, because of each one teach one, so in 1991, when Robert Island closed as a political prison, in 91, the 27th of April, okay? Those, those youth, those persons who came here, who could not read and write, at least in 91, because of each one teach one, they could now read and write in 91, because of each one teach one. Because they transformed this island, this quarry here, and, and the prison, into the place of learning now. But also if you ask yourself the question, how could they get it right? It was wardens guarding them. There was about 10 wardens in the quarry, seven above the quarry with rifles, and three in the quarry with killer dogs. The order was for the wardens to shoot and kill. If any prisoner leave the quarry to answer a nature's call, the order was to shoot and kill you and take for the head. That's why they had to use that small cave there as a toilet, because of the shoot and kill, okay? That's why they used that cave as a toilet. In the beginning, they would make a hole in the ground to use it. Afterwards, they were given two buckets. It was called the bucket system in the cave as a toilet. So imagine for yourself, 32 grown men, the size of Niels Mandela, had to use two buckets as a toilet. When the buckets are filled up with whatever, each prisoner has to clean the buckets with his bare hands or get a chance. Okay, that's the conditions they had to go through. But they also, like I said, they transformed this place into the place of learning. It was all the change of mindsets. You see? But they also, I always tell, uh, 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 um, and the people, okay, now also that, uh, uh, now that reconciliation, okay, so Africans will know what it's about, reconciliation. I always say it was also started out of here, reconciliation. Because it was in this quarry here that the prisoners, they changed the mindsets of the wardens. But also remember many from the wardens that was guarding the prisoners here was young wardens from the age of 18 years old, young wardens, young men. So many from the young wardens, when they came to Robin Island, many of them had no clue what the party was all about. Because they were put on the island, and, and, and they were told, you must go take care of those terrorists. Okay? It is said this was all terrorists. So when these young wardens came here, and they saw these elderly people, they thought, how can this be terrorists? These, these are all old men, elderly people. Okay? But then, um, but then Nels Mandela told the other prisoners, don't fight these young wardens. Because he said these young wardens is also victim, victims 
of a visa society. So we mustn't fight them. We must embrace them. We must bring this young African world that's nearer unto us. We must explain to them what the struggle is all about. So I'd say the change of mindset, you see. So now because of that, these prisoners, through Nyaz Madiala and so Sulin Gomubeke, they change now the mindsets of these African wardens, getting them onto their side. You see? They started now to interact. They started now to